This video is adding on to my last one where I demonstrated how you could use parallel arrays as well as loop forward and backward through arrays content. So I just wanted to show you one more thing and that would be how to use raw image to display images as well as storing the textures in a texture array. So I'm just going to be adding it on to the project that I just worked on. If you didn't see the other video and you'd like to, I'll put the link in the video description area. Okay, so if I want to, let's say, have the image of the food that I am looking at, the food and calories. So, so far I have um, just a really basic program where I have a food name and the number of calories and I can click through and it cycles through again and same forward and backward. Let's say I would like a picture that goes with that. So what I can do is create a raw image UI element on the screen. So I'm going to go ahead and in my canvas, I'm just going to go plus UI raw image and I position and make it the size that I'd like it to be. So let's make it, that'd probably be fine. Okay. And then I need some images. So to get images in, I have these um, JPEGs of food um, that correspond to the items in my array. So all you do is you grab these. And so these are just plain old JPEGs. I made sure that they're square and all the same size so they give similar quality. So all I do is take that and drag it into my assets folder. And if I'd like to be more organized, I could have that in a separate folder as well. So now I want to assign a texture to this raw image. So if I click on the raw image and I go over to the inspector, notice it says texture none. So how about, since this starts with pizza, I think is my first item, I'm gonna start this with pizza. So I'm gonna go ahead and drag that as the very first texture. So all I did was grab this and drag it over the texture slot. So now let's add some code that we can use to control and swap the texture out as we click forward and backward. So let's go to our Ray's C Sharp script. And I already have my text field set up, my food and calories, and an index that would control them, as well as the starting setup, um, next button and back button methods. So first, let's add a raw image UI element, and this will allow us to access the raw image object on the screen, just like the text UI elements. I'll just call it the image, nothing fancy. So then let's also make an array. And what I'm gonna do is make a public texture array. So it's of type texture and I'm gonna call it my textures. You can call it whatever you'd like. I'm gonna say new texture. And what I wanna do is put in the brackets how many elements I'd like. And in this case, I would like six because I'd like it to match up with the amount that are in the other two arrays. So I'm gonna go ahead and put six. And then to display it, just like the others, I would do something like this. I would say the image dot texture because it's not controlling text. These were controlling text. This is going to be controlling the texture of the raw image equals my textures current item. Because I would like the index to line up with the others. So it should all be controlled at the same time. In fact, I'm gonna copy this and paste that in the other two areas where that would go. Okay, so you may be wondering, well, how does it know what textures to display? Well, we're gonna be assigning that in our inspector. So I need to get this in first. I'm gonna save and go back to Unity. So now that I'm in Unity, I'm gonna click on my script and notice in the inspector, I have my um, slots to assign things. So for instance, the image, I still need to assign the raw image so I can either drag it over, I'll do it that way, I think, or I could um, select it here. 
and I didn't name it. That's my only raw image, so that should be fine. And notice we can see our arrays and we can see our calories. We can also see what my textures is going to be. So um, this in, in this case, it's showing that there are no textures assigned. Now I left my food one open for easy reference that I can see in what order I need this to be. So for element zero, I need element zero to be the pizza texture. So what I can do is I can either click on this little dot. Um, notice I did name these in a way that they'll be easy to find. So I could click on the circle and select, I want that to be the pizza one. So that's actually a pretty easy way to do it. Another way is you can drag it over. So element one would be burger. So I could drag it there. So either way, I'm gonna go ahead and use the dot method. So I'm gonna click here, element two needs to be pasta. Element three should be tacos. Element four should be soup. And element five should be sushi. Okay. And just, I can just make sure that these look like they're looking correct. That should be fine. And at that point, I should be able to just save it, hit play, and it should change along with the text arrays. So we start with pizza, burgers, pasta, tacos, soup, sushi. So the next one should be pizza. And there it is. So I can go forward and backward through my array. Now I wanna show you one more bonus thing. This doesn't have really anything to do with arrays, but it is about tidying up your code. If you notice, we have three areas where I'm doing the exact same thing. I'm updating my screen. And this is a great spot where you could make a method to do that for you. So if something changes, you can do it in one place instead of in every place. So what I'm gonna do, and there is an automatic way to do this, I'm gonna do it the long way, really. I'm gonna go down here and make one more custom method, and I'm gonna call it um, public void. Let's call it update screen. So what I'm going to do is take these three lines and put them here. So every time I run update screen, it will run this, which is basically just setting the text of display food to the current item, text of display calories, as well as updating the texture. So instead of these three lines, I can simply type update screen and remember to put in the parentheses there or it won't work, okay? So when it sees this, it goes, oh, I need to run that other method. So it'll go over here, run these three lines. And so what's nice about that is I can copy this and replace these other spots where this is going on. And it just tidies up your code. Um, and then if I had more items on the screen, I can simply put it on my update screen method. And I don't actually need to change these other ones at all so that's pretty nice so let's just verify that this works let me save and um, hit play again and it should work just the same so behind the scenes it's working different as far as the user's concerned looks about the same I just wanted to kind of put that out there because i um, kind of keeping your t code tidy will make your life easier in the future and like I said, if you were not sure about some of the UI things, um, I do have other um, videos. I'll put a link to that. And also the, the video that got us up to here with the parallel array, I'll link to that as well.